Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today we're going to complete a machine called Grab from TryHackMe. This machine allows us to learn how to do OSINT, some enumeration, and also just to learn how to bypass filters on websites. So if you're interested in learning how to attack websites and also how you can defend against them, then this is going to show you how to do that. So this machine is part of the red teaming path. As you can see, I have done 84% of this section. So if I complete this machine, it will count towards my progress on the red teaming series here. So without wasting time, the first thing that we need to do is sign in to try hack me. It's one of the latest machines. Go ahead and join the room. And once you join the room, first task here is to start the machine. And once we start the machine, it should be running. Give it about four to five minutes. And we'll be answering these questions here. It says, what is the API key that allows users to register for the website? Okay. So we don't know anything for now. First thing is, let's go ahead and start our tag box or use your own Kali machine. I prefer to use my own Kali machine, but if you don't have that with VPN, go ahead and start the attack box. And once the attack box is started, I'm doing minus SV, minus SC. So for now, let's just, we use the boss here and SV will show me service version and SC will show me if it, it will run default scripts and VV will do some the boss output and then we give it our IP address. In fact, since I'm doing the boss, I would like it to scan all ports. That's what this is going to do. And we should see. As you can see here, right away we discovered 80, 443, and 22. So we'll open a browser and see if we can find anything there. Okay, so opening a browser here, we can just go to that IP address and we see a default Apache page. So we also saw that 443 is open. So let's go to HTTPS and say advanced, accept and continue. All right, you see that it's saying it's not accepted. So this is HTTPS. Let's check the certificate. One of the things that we can do to find more information about a target is, especially if it's a, it is a certificate, is check the certificate information. So the, it's verified by search me. Let's view the certificate. So the common name is grep.thm. So let's use that. And we found it in the certificate. In Etsy host, we can come in here. And let's give it our IP address and then say grep dot try hack me. That's the name that we saw. And this time hopefully it resolves. HTTPS grep dot try hack me. I hope it works. All right, now it says search me. So what we can do now is let's see if we can let log in. Try the obvious like admin, 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 password. And we see that it says password is invalid. We're also trying to see if it even allows us to verify whether the user is not there. Invalid username or password. So we, we don't even know if admin is a valid username here. But that's fine. Let's go and register. I'm registering IT Security Labs. IT, secu IT Security Labs. Email is IT Security Labs at email.com. IT Security Labs. IT Security Labs. Okay, let's register. Oh no, invalid or expired API key. So what API key are they using to verify that this is actually correct? Let's go and find out. The application is called search me, as you saw here at the top. So let's go to maybe GitHub and search for search me. Let's see if we see any repository that, that shows us anything. So we have a few repos here, kind of hard to tell. You can do it by going through every single one of these and see if one of them works. Let's look at the code. We only have 10. So search me is showing up on this code here. It's also showing up on this code here. It says this website is under development. This looks like what we found on the landing page earlier. So what we need is to understand how this app works and also find the API key. So here's the API section. Here's the register.php. As you can see, they don't have any API key in here. That's fine. What else is in the API is upload. So once we get in, we might be able to upload something. And in the upload here, notice that they're using valid magic bytes. So we cannot just upload an image. We need to make sure that it has the correct magic bytes here. As you can see, they're accepting JPEG, PNG, and B. BMP. So if we need to upload a reverse shell, we need to give them these magic bytes. Kind of good to know. 
Okay, so far we haven't found the API key. People usually mess around in the commits where they remove secrets afterwards. So here, initial commit, remove key. All right, so here is the key that we need to register. So now it's a matter of how do we give them this key? So first, we launch burp suite, interception on, then try to register again. Um, okay, we need to give this to the burp suite browser, which is this one. Okay, now we've got to register. Our user is IT Security Labs, password is IT Security Labs, IT Security Labs at email.com. I just give it the, them something that looks like an email. This is IT Security Labs twice. Okay, invalid or expired key. Now let's intercept it. Now, if we look here, here's the key. They're sending a bogus key. This is not the same as the one that we found in our repo. In the repo, this one starts with FF, ends with F39. That's not the same thing. So let's replace that with the real thing. All right, now with this, if we forward, registration successful, okay? So our registration successful, we're going to turn interception off and we can sign in as IT Security Labs. IT Security Labs. So we just bypassed um, the API key using OSINT. We searched the internet for it. So here we see that we have a dashboard, nothing really interesting, but we found our first flag here as well. So maybe let's go and give them what they need. Uh, what is the first flag? That one. What is the API key that allows the user to log in? We found it right here. Okay. What is the email of the admin user? So we need to find the email of the admin user. So I don't think we can find the admin user here. So what we can do is we can try maybe to see if there's another place we, instead of public, we go to admin. But I want to first check the such API upload that we saw. Remember, in the repo, we saw that we've been under API, we've registered and upload. So this is the function that we want. And here it takes these magic bytes, JPEG, PNG, and BMP. So I'll show you how we can use that to uh, bypass it. Uh, API upload doesn't work. Is it just upload to PHP here? I think that's how it's working. All right. So in order for us to upload here, we need to upload a file that is the magic bytes defined here. And they accept JPEG, PNG, and BMP. But we're not in the business of uploading JPEGs or any of those files. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to locate a PHP reverse shell. This is the, like the most classic PHP reverse shell that you can see. So we're going to use this one and we'll put it over here as rev.php. Maybe we'll name it hacker.php because we want to be a little bit more dramatic, right? So now we have hacker.php. Let's nano hacker.php and modify it to our needs. Most of the time you can delete all these comments because they can be used for detection. But for now, we just need to change this to our IP address. We can leave the 888 the same or we can change that as well. Okay, our nmap finished. We also found a few other ports unknowns, but that's fine. We'll check that later. Let's do an IP8, see what our IP address is. It's 10, 10, 10, 10, 1, 1, 9. Okay. 10, 13, 10, 1, 1, 9. That's my VPN. All right. Now that that is done, uh, let me also change this from 2.8 maybe to 4.3. Because why not? Now that we did that, this will not pass because it says hacker.php and it also doesn't have the magic bytes that are there. Hacker.php to hacker.php.jpg. We can pick any of the ones that are listed on our git repo here i'm just picking the first one jpeg and this one is magic bytes ffd8 ffe0 
okay so now let's put the magic bytes into the jpeg the ex extension is going to pass the check for the extension but this will still not pass because it needs the magic bytes but before we add the magic bytes let's add just uh, random stuff at the beginning here so that we can add our magic bytes to that so we can say nano you got a jpeg so in order for me for us to maintain our php let me just put four here now x editor okay php.jpg so instead of 2e we're going to say ffd8 d8 ffe0 okay then we can control x to save enter now that we did that we can upload hacker.php.jpg and it should succeed let's see so we go here browse so this is going to be on the root uh, machines like me grab that one i'm not going to even use burp here it should succeed if it fails we'll find out so here we see that we have a file upload successfully all right so now we need to find out where can this upload be it could be maybe in uploads.php okay so looking back here the upload path is slash uploads so if we go back here and we go to grab api uploads and since we found this inside of the api folder it makes sense right so naked minus lv and p on 443 okay so coming back to the uploads here is hacker.php.jpg i actually found out that it should be have been hacker Dot jpeg dot php but <laughs> this is it right here that's why it's failing is because i did not actually give it the correct name so let's redo this again this time with the correct name so we can move hacker php dot jpeg to hacker dot, j dot jpeg dot php that's what i needed to do now let's upload it okay so going back to our upload with php let's browse and go and get that file okay in try hack me grab now we have hacker.jpg.php that should work upload okay now that it's uploaded now we just need to go to such uploads like that and in here this is the correct one if we click on that this time notice that it's hanging so we fixed the extension i hope we got a reverse shell back and sure enough we did so this is a limited shell if you want to fix it you can just go to github here's a link where you can find how to stabilize some of these limited shells so they have python here but i believe this is python 3 so we just use it as python 3. this is just stabilizing the shell so that it's usable nothing fancy here I would also like maybe to use X term. Yeah, this one. I don't care about bash that much, but this should be good enough. I uh, I just want this colors. So this will make my shell a little bit usable and it's not fully stable, but I'm okay with that. So let's do an LS manual enumeration here so that we can become root. In fact, our next task according to here is what is the email of the admin user? Cat such etsy pass wd. Do we have admin in here? So I'm just looking around. So we are looking for the admin user and we are in as WW data. So admin is not a thing. Where did we get landed? Uh, let's check the home folder. So home we have try me and ubuntu these names here kind of tell me that these are not special users i don't think we're supposed to break into any of these since we're also asking for an admin user i might as well look somewhere else so uh, var, www, html just in case there's more files in here okay i see index.php api ls api does this look this looks pretty much standard to what we already had on github so let's go one one down just in case there's another website here uh 
Leak checker. What are those? Uh, is this the directory? Let's leak checker. Uh, check email.php index. Check email.php. Okay. So we don't have permissions here. This is owned by Ubuntu. Great. So we have no business being there. Let's check the backup folder that we just saw here. Let's backup. Okay. Users.sql. We like that. Um, instead of cat, let's do a less. All right. So PHP my admin is SQL dump. So someone did a SQL dump, probably to back up a configuration file for the site. So usually there is passwords in here. Okay. So here is user of test. Okay. We don't need that one. Here's my admin. All right. So it looks like we found the user here, a uh, password. So here's what was happening. ID is two. The username is admin. And the password here, it looks like this is the password hash, which is fine. Then we have the email address. So this is what they're asking for. I thought that was the correct one. What is the host name of the web application that allows a user to check an email for a possible password leak. Okay, so it's not that one. Let's go and see. Let's check our end map. So we found a port, this one. 51377. Website live in var www backup. It's, it's not supposed to be a website. So let's do an ls. We have another one here called leak checker in addition to what we have here. So let's check if it's just a leak checker. Because that will be possible. I'm doing that because that var www, that's where you keep your websites. All right, so it's leak checker from using that information. So what that means, we'll do that. Leak checker, the try me to grab, try me and we have this port here 51337. I found this port from our nmap results with the HTTPS. Oh, okay. Next, we need to add leak checker to our Etsy host for that to work. Okay. Now that we did that, now let's try it. It should work this time. Try again. All right, we are in business. So this one took me a while to figure out. Okay, so it's asking us to check for an email if that was leaked. Well, we already have an email that we found in backup. And we have this admin email here that we need to go and check. Let's check if the admin email. All right, so the admin password was leaked, I guess. So leak checker is telling us this is the password. And I think that is the final flag. So we don't need to become root on the box. So we just completed the machine. If you like this machine, please remember to like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments if there's somewhere where I could have improved or if you noticed something that was interesting. Thank you very much and I hope to see you next time.